there. Hello and welcome to the technical section of Biopandit. This is Saurav, your very own Mahapandit. Today I am going to show you how to translate the nucleotide sequence of a gene into a protein sequence. This analysis has two parts. First, we have to download the nucleotide sequence of a gene from public databases. We are going to use Escherichia coli ribosomal protein S2 gene sequence for this purpose. The second part is to translate the sequence. How does a gene sequence get translated? Well, ribosomes perform this task. According to the genetic code of the respective organism, ribosome reads the triplet codons and polymerizes respective amino acids. So, if you know to which organism your gene sequence belongs, you can choose your codon table in the first place. Genetic codes differ among certain organisms. So the same nucleotide sequence can have different protein products in different organisms. You have to take care of that. Next, you have to choose your translation initiation site. You are given a random nucleotide sequence. You do not know from which three nucleotides translation begins. So what you have to do is that you have to try different three nucleotide windows. How does that work? Let us begin with this messenger RNA nucleotide sequence. The small and the large subunits of ribosome bind with it. As the ribosome translates over the mRNA, it reads the three nucleotide codons and translates them into a polypeptide. Now see this carefully. Here we are assuming that the first nucleotide in the sequence is the translation start site. If you assume this, this translation is for the forward strand frame 1. Frame 2 is if you consider the second nucleotide in the sequence is the translation start site. See that this time an entirely different polypeptide is translated. Similarly, frame 3 considers the third nucleotide is the translation start site. If you think about it, the concept is quite simple. You have no idea from where translation starts, so you consider all possible options. For the forward strand, there are three possible translations. Similarly, for the reverse strand, there will be three possible translations. In summary, for a given nucleotide sequence, there will be six possible translations. Enough concept. Let's calculate. First, we are going to collect some nucleotide sequence. We go to Uniprot database, we go to advanced search and select our protein name, Thirtius ribosomal protein S2. Next, we select the organism, Escherichia coli. We hit the search button. It shows you documented S2 protein sequences for E. coli. Go to the entry page, scroll down to the genomic annotation database. Select the gene ID that will take you to the respective NCBI gene web surface. Go to this FASTA link and you will be redirected to the nucleotides web server. Here you can see the coding sequence of RPSB gene that encodes S2 protein. The location of this gene within the genome in terms of the base pair numbering is shown here. We need a computational tool to translate this, this gene sequence now. We are going to use two standalone tools implemented in MBOSS software package. These are TransCQ and Sixpack. The Windows version of MBOSS can be downloaded from this link. After you install, this is the graphical user interface. You go to New Click, Translation, TransCQ. Paste your gene sequence here. See, now there are three frame options for forward strand and three frame options for reverse strand. Let us start with frame 1 and hit the go button. See that there is a new window with your translated polypeptide sequence in it. 
you can go back to uniprot and confirm then that this is the actual protein product of your gene sequence the last star means the final codon is a stop codon let us get back to our options again and select forward strand frame 2 now see the translation lots of stop codons in the intermediate regions of the sequence what happened nothing you just removed the first nucleotide from the coding region and now ribosome is translating only a small peptide of 26 amino acids which has no similarity with protein S2 whatsoever. So I hope you understand how dangerous a single nucleotide deletion in the coding region can be. If you select frame 3, the scenario is pretty much the same. Let us move on to the reverse strand, frame 1. Now the given nucleotide sequence is considered as the reverse strand. Obviously, genetic codes are not identical in the forward and the reverse strands. So now you have a translation, but the translated sequence is not that of protein S2. If you select other frames, you will see many stop codons in the middle, just as you saw for the forward strand. So basically this is a tedious job, isn't it? Selecting one option after the other. Let us use six pack then. It's much more convenient and easier to use. Once again, we paste the nucleotide sequence. Select minimum length of the open reading frame to 20 amino acids. Go to advanced options and select standard genetic code and finally hit the go button. A new window appears with all six possible translations of your nucleotide sequence. F1, F2 and F3 represent the three frames of forward strand. F4, F5 and F6 represent the three frames of your reverse strand. You can see stop codons as stars for different frames. The second tab in the result window includes the information for ORFs. What are ORFs? ORFs are open reading frames and there is already a video on open reading frame in our channel. Please watch that along with this video for a complete understanding. So this tab includes information regarding ORFs found for different frames. So this is all for now guys. To learn more such techniques, Please keep watching the other videos of Biopandit. Please feel free to contact us in biopandit at the red gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more options, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys. See you soon.